In this episode of Motive Garage presented by Spares Box, we start preparing our Group A Tribute R32 GTR for its new life with some dry ice blasting, preparing it for paint underneath. Our R32 GTR had a race car life before we got it. It's got plenty of dents, chips, wear and tear and a whole lot of grime underneath from oils and all sorts of things. There is patch jobs with what looks like house paint. Basically, it's a mess. But that's race car life. Being white, it looks even worse than it is. We wanted to clean it up and tidy it up before putting some black paint over the top. We stripped the car as much as we could to tidy it up, both underneath and inside, and we decided to try out some dry ice blasting. So we called Andy from Arctic Blast. So I've got a fabrication business, AH Customs, uh, doing performance uh, automotive fab, aluminium welding, TIG welding, stainless, all that sort of stuff. Our group of friends and circle has been in uh, the cars forever and one thing leads to another and it's like far out, how do we clean these things? So there's a little bit of an internet sensation of, uh, of recent times, a little bit of uh, exploration into the dry ice world and yeah, here we are. Your typical methods which you would probably be aware of is everyone gets the degreaser out and, uh, and, and the gurney and they go to town and it's a massive mess, it's really hard. Um, and that always leaves a smear, you can never get it quite right. So the dry ice blasting, it uses um, a solid form of CO2 and the way that it actually works is we use really high pressure air from a, a diesel, turbo diesel engine. And what that does is it's shooting the dry ice pellet out at 300 meters a second, which is like phenomenal. And then we've got from that, it's hitting the um, contaminant on a substrate, say the underbody of a car. Uh, we've got a few effects. We've got a thermal effect where um, we're hitting that contaminant, we're freezing it, uh, the dry ice is coming in and as it goes from a solid to a gas, it's expanding at a rate of about a factor of 700. So we're coming in, we're freezing, we're shrinking and we're having mini explosions remove all the contaminants from under the car. And the beauty about that is there is no byproduct. Uh, it's environmentally friendly. We don't have sand or grit or aggregate left all through your shop or under your car. There's no water, it's dry. We can hit electrical like there's, we could, I could go on for another 10 minutes about, you know, bits and pieces why, why and why not. There's no sand, there's no water. There is no byproduct that we're introducing. The only thing that you're left with after a dry ice blast is the stuff that comes off the car whether that be grease, dirt, whatever was on it. Preparation before paint, we're gonna remove, like you can't paint a car that's full of grease underneath it. So we can remove dirt, we can remove grease, and we're gonna have a really clean, dry surface that's ready for fabrication or, or ready for paint. Your restoration stuff is old cars have been restored. They're dirty, they're old, they need cleaning. And doing a dry ice blast on an old car is gonna bring it back to a point where we can then put some wax on after or some protective products and give that car a longer life and you know live out many, many more years being clean, not holding moisture and starting to rust. When you clean, you know, like a transfer case or a gearbox or a diff, aluminium stuff comes up really, really good. It's nearly as if it came out of the factory. It can be a 20 year old filthy grimy gearbox, which I'm sure we'll see at some point today. And uh, yeah, we get fantastic results with that. The underside of the car, sometimes we will take the sound deadening off and we'll be left with a paint. If it leaves the sound deadening on, it will just come like it's rolled off that factory floor, so to speak. So if you were to paint this car as is, it's going to look good for about a whole of five seconds and then it's going to not, not have heared properly, start falling off. We can remove all the rubber, all the grime. Yes, if there's been white paint rattle canned on there, it's going to take that off. It's going to leave some parts on. But the overall effect is it's the preparation work for that restoration, for that repainting. It's going to be ready to go. I think that if you took this car to a painter at the moment and said, I want you to paint this car underneath. They're gonna say, go away, you need to clean it. It's, you know, we can't do our job until it's better than it is. After we've done a dry ice blast on this car, it's gonna be at a point where they can then do their job. The paint's gonna stick. It's gonna be ready for either fab or paint.
we also decided to have a crack at some parts we had in the shop, and as you can see, the results are very impressive. With a clean and most importantly oil-free surface, some wax and grease remover and some masking up and we were ready to put down some underbody and satin black paint and tidy up underneath. The finished result is a massive improvement over where we started. The dry ice blast saved us so much time degreasing, sanding and preparing underneath that we could almost spray straight onto the car. The entire job was done in two days and the R32 Group A Tribute car is looking much better and ready to start being built. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of the build. Next on our list was a new windscreen to replace the old cracked one. We called Justin Time, who we use for all of our windscreen replacements. We put the car back together, wrapped a few more parts to finish the look and had it on display at the SAU New South Wales 20th Anniversary Car Show.